was so cool. Cool, it was fun. <laughs> I don't know a lot of people. I feel like I'm standing like. <laughs> 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 Damn, I look like I'm like real far away. <laughs> you want to do that? You want to keep it on? I don't know if y'all like it on. Or off. Would it be easier if it's off? Three, two, one. All right, welcome to the Lift Heavy Run Long podcast. Um, I'm Vaughn. I'm Wilson. And we are here with our guest, Brandy McGoldrick. Hello. Hi, Brandy. Brandy's a competitive CrossFit athlete, yes. and she also runs a gym, a CrossFit Correct. gym. Yep, uh, CrossFit Hit and Run, downtown Memphis. Downtown Memphis, yep. We are super excited to have you here talking to us, so Thanks. thank you very much for coming. Um, so tell us about yourself. Um, well, I've, I guess in the CrossFit side of things, I've been CrossFitting for about five and a half years now. So for a while before that, I played soccer through college. Um, and then recently, I guess so the past year and a half, I've been running um, CrossFit Hit and Run downtown before that was in the accounting world, kind of stepped out, and then mm -hmm. full um, on fitness side of things, I guess you could say so now. Um, but yeah, I just managed the gym downtown, um, coach at it as well, and then outside of that, I just train. Now, that was a pretty bold move for you to get out of accounting and, mm -hmm. and jump into full-time fitness and yeah. gym. It was a big move. <laughs> you enjoying that? I am. I Good. am. It fits me much better. <laughs> what was the thing that pushed you over the edge? Like, was there a moment where you were like, okay... I'm just going to I know there's um, thousands of people right now that are saying I would yeah. love to um, have the it, courage. I still, it's not like I hate accounting. It just, the side of things I was in, the field I was in, I just didn't feel like was exactly for me. I still dabble in it here and like here and mm -hmm. there, helping people out or at the gym. I manage the gym. So, I mean, I do the books for the gym and like, that's what I enjoy most is just like side accounting work and then just being able to um, manage the gym and coach others. Right. Um, but I just got to the point where I was tired of being unhappy at what I was doing mm -hmm. and, um, finally just decided to take the jump and make the change to That's do something awesome. I was more passionate about. Did it take a lot of time for you to figure out that I'm tired of, of doing what I'm doing? Um, it took me, uh, yeah, a decent amount of time. I would like knew I was kind of like, always not like satisfied mm -hmm. um but i was almost like too scared to make the switch and make the change yeah mike helped a lot with that he's very very open-minded and all for doing what you love and are passionate about uh -huh. so he helped me a lot with that and then um finally the opportunity came available to where i could coach and make it more of a full-time thing so i was like all right now's the time <laughs> that's great <laughs> You can get caught up in being so ha unhappy and yeah. and uh, unhealthy for so long mm -hmm. that you don't realize that you're unhappy and Yeah, I and think unhealthy. a lot of people are in that situation. I've experienced sure. that yeah. for sure. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. You just get in a routine where mm -hmm. that's what you're supposed to do is get up and go to work Yep. Uh, and for eight hours and then come home. Yep. And, and if you're unhappy, you're unhappy. But <laughs> right. that's just, I guess, their mindset and they just get yeah. stuck in it. It's, it's a lot harder to make a, a change and, and much easier just to be miserable, I think, in a mm -hmm. lot of ways. Yeah. Um, you had said that you played soccer in, in college. Before mm -hmm. college, were you in just soccer or are you just athletic um, all the way around? Have so, you always been like, that in way? high school, I ran track and did soccer. Um, if you go way back before that, then I did a bunch of other things. I swam um, mm -hmm. competitively. I played softball competitively, soccer dabbled in tennis <laughs> wow. but that's about all it was wow. mainly swimming softball and soccer when I was growing up until high school and, then and where are you to... from we didn't even ask that where'd you um, grow up I grew up in Stewart Florida Okeechobee okay. till I was like in eighth grade but no one really knows where that is and then uh -huh. we moved over to the coast to Stewart and that's where I went to high school okay and how did you get here um so I went to college in South Carolina Florence South Carolina at a smaller school called Francis Marion University Families from Georgia, so they moved back when I was in college. So I went to grad school in Georgia. Mm -hmm. That's how I found CrossFit um, was when I finished grad school. Um, then through CrossFit, I met Mike through mutual friends in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And then that's Who is how, now your husband. Who is now yeah. my husband. Okay. And that's how I um, got over to Memphis was through him. 
Okay. He brought me over. <laughs> okay. I guess I didn't know that. You yeah. have a way yeah. of meeting people and marrying people <laughs> at, through CrossFit. I, <laughs> yeah. I did that. So. Uh, yep. Yeah. Um, so I moved to Memphis. It's been, oh, when did I move here? 2012, January. So it's just been over four years now. Okay. Now, did you play soccer area. through, you said uh, you went to graduate school? Yes. Were you playing, were you staying active throughout or did you have a period where you weren't really um, physically fit and then got into CrossFit? Yeah, grad school, I was still staying pretty much in shape. I started grad school in the summer. So in college, college soccer is in the fall. Then you have your spring season. But usually when you're a senior, you don't play in the spring because it's uh -huh. just like your off season. But our team actually needed some extra players. So I kind of stuck around and played when I could. So I would go to some practices, do some conditioning with them, play some games. So I stayed in shape through the spring. And then I was still like kind of on the soccer kick. So I kept training through the summer, just doing soccer workouts because that's all I knew at the time. Yeah. Um, did that probably for through the end of summer and then just mainly was running um, and I was training for a half marathon. I did that. So mm -hmm. I was doing a lot of running. I did a little bit of yoga, a little bit of strength training um, through grad school. And then when I started my first job in accounting, I was traveling a lot. And then that's when I got more sedentary for a probably about, it was just about three to four months, but it was enough to kind of put me down uh -huh. for a little while. Um, I was just traveling. I was gone Monday through Friday at hotels doing audit work um, for yeah. different hospitals. So by the time we got back to our room, we had already ate dinner. It was like 8 o'clock. I didn't want to go on the treadmill and uh -huh. run. So I would try and run on the weekends when I got back. Um, but then I finally found CrossFit, and that kind of got me going. Now, when you found CrossFit, your first workout, was it just, I'm off, I'm hooked? Or did you yeah, it was. drag yourself back? <laughs> yeah. Do you remember what it was? Um, I don't. I remember that Murph was like my second workout. Though. Oh, wow. But Holy my first workout mackerel. was a Saturday workout, like a free class. Um, and there, I remember there being like kettlebell swings, wall balls. I don't really remember much else outside of that, uh -huh. except my legs were jello when I was done. Wow. Now Murph is one mile run, uh, 300, 100 pull-ups, 200 squats. No, 200, Three, 200, 200 push ups, push -ups. And 300, 300 squats. squats, and then and another, another mile. mile run. And then another Which mile wasn't run. like terrible for me because I was run, kind of running at the time. Uh -huh. So I was good on the runs and I was okay on the squats, but I was using a green band on pull ups and mm -hmm. push ups. I was pretty sure I was probably warming, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> warming up on them right. <laughs> or either doing like just halfway to the ground. <laughs> yeah. right. Now, before you ever did CrossFit, were you a hater? Were you a. Did no, you? I. Um, a friend from high school actually told me about it when I was in grad school. Mm -hmm. um, and there, um, I was visiting them down in Tallahassee. They had a gym, and I was like, oh, that's really cool. I, did, I didn't try it or anything when I was down there. And I was like, well, I knew at the time I was moving to Albany in like two months, Albany, Georgia, which is where I went after grad school. Um, and that's where I started CrossFit. So I looked up, I was like, this is a kind of small town. I doubt they have one, but they had one and it was an awesome gym. Uh -huh. um, and so a couple months after I'd moved there, I got started. A girl from work invited me and I was like, yeah, I need to try this. So yeah. Well, what was the gym? Is it still World there? Camp CrossFit. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I actually, that's where I met two of my best friends. Um, and in 2011, we actually were able to put a team together and went to the games right. that okay. year. So that's the gym that I went to the games out of. Oh, nice. Yeah. So how did you go from going to, like, regular CrossFit classes to I want to be competitive at this and starting a team? Like, yeah. was the team your first um, competition environment? It wasn't my first or? competition environment. After about a month and a half maybe of – being there they held a in, they held a competition at the gym and so I signed up and did scaled um so I did a scaled competition and then a couple months later signed up for an rx competition this was all between like September and say like December uh -huh. um did one maybe like around October November I can't remember um that was rx and then did like the garage games one that's in January, February. Uh -huh. And then the open came around in March. So I'd only been crossfitting for about six months or so at wow. the time. Um, but it was the first year that the open 
was the leaderboard that was like the online open. Right. Um, so we did that. We qualified a team for regionals. The year before, they took a team to sectionals, but I don't know if they made it to regionals. And it was just, I don't know if it was, I, I wouldn't say it was luck, but no one expected us to like <laughs> get third at regionals and be able to go to the games. Wow. But well, we knew we had a shot if we just put ourselves to it. So yeah. how, how did it go at the games? Um, it was pretty awesome. We finished probably middle of the pack. Um, it was hot. There was a lot of really good athletes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it was a lot smaller than it is now. So I, can't, I wouldn't necessarily compare it to how the games are currently. But, um, I mean, it was a lot of fun. We got to compete out down on the tennis stadium. They didn't have the soccer. The soccer stadium was there, but we didn't use it. There mm -hmm. was the track and field area that we competed in and then the tennis stadium as well. So it was really fun. Wow. So yeah. at what point did you say, all right, I'm, I'm Brandy, I'm, I'm really badass, but I'm just kind of <laughs> doing what I'm doing, but I think I can really push this thing and jump to the next level. Did you get a coach or did you start working harder? Was there a yeah. distinction between um, just casual we, CrossFit? and? I would say maybe I started in September. It was like Labor Day weekend that I started and I would say that following January, um, we really started working hard, doing team competitions, like me and my two best friends, the three girls that were on the team. Um, we started doing team competitions together, training twice a day. We did the class workouts and then would like meet in the mornings and do mm -hmm. extra stuff. We honestly didn't have any plan or methods to it. We just kind of did what we thought we needed to work on. Mm -hmm. um, but after, I would say after the games that year, I had um, a big desire to either want to go back, go back to regionals, um, and that's when I moved to Memphis was that January. So um, I came to Memphis, followed the OPT blog with Mike for a few months, and then um, ended up hiring a coach that October. So I would say I'd been crossfitting, I guess, for a year before I hired my coach. But I, at that point, I kind of knew that I would need a coach to continue going to regionals or have a chance at competing mm -hmm. at the highest level that I wanted to. Um, so, and, and what I, kind of time did that take up, you know, versus one hour a day, four or five times mm -hmm. a week doing CrossFit? Once you got a coach, what kind of time commitment? was that yeah um it started out at about from going to just a typical hour class to maybe an hour and a half to two hours my uh, workouts on the weekend were longer but mm -hmm. i was working um probably 45 50 hours a week at my current accounting job so i didn't have all the time and he knew that my coach mm -hmm. knew that so he probably programmed around my schedule i would take two rest days during the week usually like monday Thursdays and then train Saturday, Sundays and get in longer sessions or two sessions right. a day on those days. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I guess I've had my, co I've had Max as my coach since 2013. Yeah. So it's no, 12. This is the same coach you've had the, yeah. entire, the whole time. Yes. Okay. Wow. I've been with him. This coming October will be four years uh -huh. that I've been with him. And you went and, and you ended up going back to regionals. Yeah, so right? I've been to regionals four times: 2011, wow. 12, 13, and 14. Mm -hmm. um, 11 and 12 were both on teams. One, the first team was out of World Camp. Second team was out of Faction. Um, we actually did really well. We got like maybe fifth or sixth. Um, we had one workout that hurt us. Um, so we were close to making it back to the games that year. And then 2013 and 14 is when I did individual. Mm -hmm. And then 2014 was when I hurt my knee at regionals. Yeah, that was terrible. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that was sad for, for everyone. Yeah, I, I remember watching it on, on, the, on the ESPN, the website or whatever. Yeah. And it was just so terrible yeah because <laughs> i remember because that because we saw I, you, the camera was I, on if me. i remember correctly like as from what i, I heard it i saw well, i saw it happen mm -hmm. and then like everybody rushed over but then they just kept on filming the event yeah. so we had no yeah. idea like yeah we were just like oh my god is yeah. she okay like, 
Well, that was that was bad. So, what was the injury you ended up I, with? I um, tore my ACL and had two partial meniscus tears. Wow. Yeah. So I had full ACL like reconstruction surgery that a month later. So that June, June twenty fourth of twenty fourteen. Okay. That that hurt us all. Uh, you're mm. you're such a humble person that I'm sure you don't, uh, you know, you can't conceive what a following you have, and and everybody at at the gym was was talking about that, and just like, you know, it just yeah. hurt for, <laughs> for somebody local as you know like yourself. That was that was awful. Did you have when you came back after that injury? Do you feel like you came back stronger, or is there when you work out? Is there a concern that? you know, this thing's going to give me more problems? Um, not really. The only time I get a hesitation is when pistols come up. I have to just spend a little extra time warming my knees up now. Um, it'll get a little stiff occasionally when I do a lot of squatting, but mm -hmm. all my numbers are higher now. I'm stronger than I was before. Um, I didn't make it back to regionals this year. The cut's top 20, um, so it was a lot tougher, a lot harsher, but my numbers, when I look at them, compare them to the years before, are all better. So awesome. um, I'm definitely happy with where, like, my progress has taken me. Yeah. So I didn't – it didn't cause me to, like, I guess get worse or stay behind. I'm definitely mm -hmm. stronger. All my lifts I've PR'd on since. So uh -huh. that's so you, exciting. <laughs> so you had a good time with the Open this year? You, I did. did. You enjoy it? Um, I, it was probably – actually the most fun I've had with the Open. Um, I didn't leaderboard in years past sitting there trying to like compare my scores to others. Mm -hmm. I just, I did every workout twice except the first one because I had a slight injury that first week. Um, but I did them every Friday and Monday and just gave it what I had and it was fun. Did you do better the second time every time? Or? All of them but week four. Okay. So I you did every one of them twice yeah every wow. friday <laughs> afternoon and monday <laughs> afternoon wow. I'm seeing there's a clear <laughs> distinction between what i do and what, what brandy does which now explain it was only week two and week three i only made one rep improvement but i was stuck on the cleans and bar muscle ups so i had to earn myself about 20 to 30 seconds extra to get that one extra rep right uh -huh. week four my arms just blew up on the handstand push-ups. I hadn't recovered. It's a weaker movement of mine, and I just didn't recover by then. And then week five, I had the motivation of beating Mike, so <laughs> I had to oh, redo yeah. it. So you, you and your husband had a, a little bit of a competition, Yeah, right? uh -huh. I went up. He's just doing it for fun, and I wanted to try to make it more fun for him. Um, I let him know after week two that I was winning two to zero, in the household <laughs> competition. And if he didn't step it up, then I was going to sweep him on <laughs> week three. Awesome. So he came back and won week three and four. And he won. We went head-to-head -head on week five. And he beat me the first time I did it. And then I came back Monday and redid it and beat him. So oh, he wow. says it doesn't. Awesome. The redo doesn't count. But uh, I, bet, I would imagine competition <laughs> in your house takes on a whole, whole new level than, yeah. than most homes. Uh, yeah, so um, what about what about your daily routine? Like, what, what does it look like? Um, so Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I coach the 6 a.m. classes. Okay. So I get up at 4.50 to 5 o'clock. Um, I have all my stuff ready from the night before. I prepare everything the night before, my breakfast and lunch and workout clothes, training gear, so that when I get up in the morning, I basically brush my teeth, put my clothes on, and I'm out the door within, like, 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, I get to the gym. I usually coach um, the 6, 8.30 and noon class. So um, from 6 to 7, I'll coach, and then um, I'll work a little bit, eat some breakfast between 7 and 8.30. So I may have a one-on-one -on -one then sometimes, but I'll either work or coach a one-on-one, -on -one, eat breakfast, coach that 8.30. And then um, Tuesdays and Thursdays, going leading into the open, I had doubles. So I would train starting from around 10.30 till – usually 12 or 10 to 12 to coach the noon class um, and then eat a little bit of food in between then and start my PM session around 2 or 2.30, knock that out. And then and your that, PM session being your training or the, yes. the class? Yeah. So okay. my personal training that my coach provided was usually I had four doubles a week. So I'd have an AM and a PM session. Um, and I would usually do two of those on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So I'd have a morning and an afternoon workout Okay. Tuesdays and Thursdays. And then 
Um, once I finish my PM session, my afternoon session, um, I may have to coach the 4.30 or I may have one-on-ones. Every now and then I'd have the afternoon, I'd be done for the day after that and would head home and get ready for the next day. Um, Mondays, I usually wouldn't coach until the afternoons. So I'd have the morning off and I would get in my work and training sessions in before I would coach because I'd coach from 4.30 to 7.30 Mm -hmm. at night. And then Fridays was kind of up in the air. I may coach the midday classes, but training was still the same, that two sessions a day, midday and afternoon or mid-morning. What do you like the most? If you could only do one, do you like the coaching or the competing more? Where do you get the most fulfillment? Um, I don't know. That's a hard question. I love competing. I just think it's something that's it just in me for now. Just, mm-hmm. um, but I mean, if I could be paid to compete, then I mean, I would compete. But I love sure. coaching and I love the members at our gym. So obviously, when I, w- well, I guess I was working my accounting job when I was injured. But I mean, if I, something happened where I had to stop competing, then I would be just as happy coaching and helping right. our members out. Right. So. Well, awesome. What if there's. Um, someone out there that wants that it's in the regular classes at Mm -hmm. a CrossFit gym and they think I want to be competitive. What, what's the, what's the next thing for that person? Like, like if they're doing really well in their CrossFit classes, Mm -hmm. you know, they're usually, you know, on the top of the leaderboard in their gym and they, they start thinking that they, they could be competitive. What, what is the, what is the first thing they need to do? Um, First thing I would suggest is to evaluate your, lifestyle and work schedule because it requires a little bit more time um, than just coming in and hitting the hour class. Um, you need at least two, two hours, five days a week to get in solid training. Um, so if your work schedule or family life, whatever allows for that, then I would think you, can move, you should move on to the next step mm-hmm. of either hiring a personal coach, which is the best option, or if you don't have the money for that, then finding the best competitive blog that's out there and fully sticking to that. But whatever you do, even if it's, if it's a blog, I suggest sticking to that blog. Don't like cherry pick, like, Oh, I'm going to do this blog one day, this blog the next, or the class this day, then the blog this day, you have to make a commitment and stick to it because there's specific like science behind that programming for the Mm -hmm. most part for either the gym or the blog that you're following. And, Whatever you do, if you stick to it, then you'll see the most results. Yeah. But hiring a coach is obviously individualized, so, like, it's for you specifically, which is why that's the best option. But Do you rely on your coach for specific nutrition guidance, or is he strictly? Um, he'll provide me nutrition guidance if mm-hmm. I want it. Um, but or do you even need nutrition guidance? I don't your... ask him a whole lot. If things kind of get out of whack or off, I'll ask him. Mm-hmm. Um, just get his thoughts and opinions. But um, for the most part, my nutrition's pretty simple. I don't. I take a post workout shake, protein and carbs. Um, I try to take fish oil, but outside of that, I just try and eat clean and eat enough. Really. Yeah. And that's not really a struggle for, for you, the nutrition part, eating the right things and mm-hmm. not falling off and now, when I first getting started into cross- bad habits. When I first started CrossFit, it was. It was very hard just because it was something new. I thought I was told to try and eat paleo, which is great, but I didn't know all the options and varieties there were within eating mm-hmm. paleo. So I was like, oh, all I can eat is like meat and salads and mm-hmm. like fruit and nut. That's fruits and nuts and so I was like eating salads for like lunch and dinner and then I would be fine for like three days and then I'd be like starving because I wasn't eating enough I wasn't Mm -hmm. getting in enough carbs and enough protein and then I would go binge and I our gym was across the street from a Publix and I loved Publix subs and banana pudding (laughs) (laughs) so I would go load up (laughs) and then go home and binge eat for a day or two over the weekend and get get back on it (laughs) which there I mean there's really nothing wrong with that but if you're just doing it maybe like for like one meal a week or so or twice a week is fine but times a day (laughs) (laughs) um but do you have a day that you set aside to do that? Um, or do you just typically, if I do it, it'll be the night before a rest day. 
So, okay. like, I usually don't train on Wednesdays or Sundays. So, usually it's on Saturday nights. We'll go out to dinner, have, like, mm-hmm. Mexican or whatever. I won't. Like, I still, like, try and, like, make conscious decisions. I'm not going to go eat a bunch of processed foods. But I may have pizza as well mm-hmm. or um, Mexican and have the cheese dip and whatever I want. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't go and, like, get fast food or just eat a bunch of, like, really processed yeah. type foods um and then tuesday nights i may have a little something but i don't splurge as much on tuesday nights but saturday nights we just like to just let loose <laughs> and, you, and you, you say you have two full rest days a week yes but every week mm-hmm. um i don't know what my i imagine that my training going forward will be pretty similar i've been resting this week after the open since mm-hmm. it's over with um i'll start back training on friday but I like, just based on my work schedule, I like to rest Wednesdays and Sundays. I like that one day on the weekend to be out of the gym and just have it completely off. That's one thing that's hard for a lot of people, especially newer people. Yeah. That They think they they have to work every day. They have to Mm -hmm. come into the gym and do as much as they possibly can every single day. Yeah. and, And don't want to hear that you need a rest day. Yeah. You know, more than one rest day. Yeah. In most cases. Um, there was, when I first started CrossFit, it was hard. I probably may have only rested like one day a week, mm-hmm. if that, when I first started. And then after maybe like six months or so, I started feeling it though. I was like, I've got to like take more rest days. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't remember when it was when I actually started taking two rest days. Probably once I moved here, I probably, probably because Mike was taking two specific rest days and I was just following the blog and that's what they had was two rest days. So I think then it was like, what blog is that that you're following? um, It originally was the OPT blog is what we first started following. Um, I guess four or five years or five or six years ago for Uh him. Um, but I followed that for like six months before I hired my coach and it was fun. Um, I don't think they have the blog anymore though, but it was fun getting a having a friend or someone else follow it with you that way you have some accountability yeah that is something that's hard when you get out of the classes is training on your own it's a bit uh, i notice it's a big Ooh, that um, would be not like problem good for, for people me. it's hard yeah because you're on your own like you sometimes most of the time the classes are going on but it's not the same camaraderie that you get when mm-hmm. you're in the yeah. class you're over here like on the side doing your own thing right. and if you don't have someone else beside you whether they're doing their own thing or not then it gets really tough Uh and that's when you just have to really have the dedication to want to be competitive and make it to the next level or step your personal game up to the next level Uh Mm -hmm. i struggled with it for a while um but i guess it's not really that big of an issue anymore i would have a really hard time with that i mean probably 80 yeah. percent of the reason why i do any of this is i enjoy the social mm-hmm. aspect of it yeah. and uh you know the number of days that i come to the gym just because i want to go see what so and so's doing or, or hang out with so and so and yeah. then i wind up getting a good work at, workout in just yeah. as a bonus yeah. <laughs> but I, I rarely come up here like you know let's really get it done yeah uh, unless there's, you know, people around for me to do it mm-hmm. with. If I come to a class and there's nobody but me and the coach, I'm going home. <laughs> I'm not even going to try to I'm do that. I'm done with this. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's actually happened a couple of times. It has happened a couple of times. <laughs> yeah. um, and it happens hell, It happens that way when there's a room full of people here. <laughs> I just get up here and I'm like, yeah, you know what? I'm going home. <laughs> um, it helped when I first started following the blog because I was training with Mike and Shepard. Shepard Tate, he's from Memphis as well. And so it was us three kind of doing the same thing. And then Mike got his own coach. So I just started, I think it was just maybe me and Shep following the blog. Mm -hmm. But they came out with a female-specific blog then. So it was around the same time that I kind of switched to the female-specific blog. He was doing his, Mike had his personal programming. But we were at the gym around the same time. Mm -hmm. So it just helps if you have someone else next to Mm -hmm. you doing something. Right. But it's hard when the class is going on on one side and you may be over here completely by yourself. Uh-huh. But Awesome. What else you got? You had some questions. As I do. I have, as, uh, I have some like uh, pretty personal questions. Very Not important. Really. Very important. <laughs> well, important. Right. Things important that people need like to quick, know. It involves superpowers. And, <laughs> all right. and What's your favorite book? Oh, goodness. 
Um, not a big book reader. Okay. <laughs> well, how about movie? <laughs> a movie? Um, Waterboy. 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 Nice. <laughs> That's awesome. Cheat meal. Pizza and a blizzard from Dairy Queen. Pizza and a blizzard. <laughs> what size blizzard? Do you get like the, the big one? No. Uh, like I try to stick cut? to small. A small blizzard. Yeah. On Tuesday nights, when I try not to splurge too big, I'll get a mini. Because they have these little mini ones now that are oh, perfect. Okay. Wow. Yeah. What, what uh, flavor? Um, it's between the banana split and the peanut butter cookie dough uh, rocking something. If you ever see a, a mini cup in my car, <laughs> it's stolen. Somebody has stolen my car. Yeah, yeah, Wilson doesn't do anything, anything I don't do mini, mini at all. <laughs> uh, I told Mike to, I sent Mike to get me a mini blizzard one time, both of us. This was a couple weeks ago, and I was like, just get the mini. I don't want anything more because I'll just eat the whole thing. And he uh-huh. comes back with mediums. Cool. Yeah, which and is then like you can be eight like, well, minis. You're not eat the whole thing, let me throw that away for you. Yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> it's like when I, when I go to a restaurant and I get my kids like they're nine and six, and I get them both like the double cheeseburger. And I'm like, ah, if he's not gonna eat all. He doesn't have to eat all of it. Um, barbell lift. What's your favorite lift? Um, it switches between clean, a clean, and a snatch. But right now, it's the clean squat. Clean is my favorite. Squat clean. Yes. Cool. Uh, what do you do for fun outside of training and working? <laughs> if somebody um, said you got five days, no working out, no work, you can't do either of those things, what are you going to do? I would go to the beach. Go to the beach yep. and just sit there? I would play frisbee, sit there, have a few drinks, enjoy some food. Beachy thing. Go with some friends. Do you ever sure. just sit or do you ever just crave sitting around or are you always just let's go, go, go? Let's no, do I, Sundays I love to just sit around um, and not really do much. I'll do computer work on the couch, but yeah. I like to just sit around for half the day. Maybe like just that afternoon or something, get things done that morning and then the afternoon I just want to sit and relax. Uh-huh. I'm on my feet a lot, so when I get a few hours to just chill, I, I enjoy it. I hear you. Uh, what about go-to meal? Like, what? What's your emergency meal? Like, if you aren't really prepared and you're on the spot, I gotta go find something to eat. You want to be nutritious, but you forgot you, you're not ready. Um, if I'm like at a store or something, I don't mm-hmm. know if it's ever happened to you, but I've like just all of a sudden gotten like starving and needed something to eat. I'll get beef jerky. <laughs> yeah. I'll go find like, like the cash. I'll go to the cash register aisle and get the beef jerky. It's happened to me at Lowe's twice. Uh-huh. Mike likes to shop at Lowe's, and I get there, I'm like. I can't handle this unless I get something to eat. Uh-huh, so I uh-huh. go get beef jerky. Go beef yeah. jerky. Um, if I have to go to like, if I'm on the road or something and have to get fast food or drive through or whatever, I try to stick to Chick-fil-A. You can get sure. like, you can order just grilled chicken breasts yeah. mm-hmm. or, and they have their grilled chicken nuggets. Now you can yep. get that and fruit or salad. Um, but that would be my go-to is probably some type of grilled chicken salad from somewhere. Okay. Um, Whatever dressing they have, but I try and stick to just olive oil. Sometimes they have it, sometimes they don't. Yeah. Like to go, at least. Otherwise. I'd say that, that's good advice. I'm always just a couple minutes away from a disaster, from making yeah. a good decision or a really bad mm-hmm. decision. And, uh, you know, if I don't hit that window, it's yeah. trouble. If you make and a bad decision, it's a really bad It's a decision. really, really bad and decision. And for, like, people who travel a lot, I never – I did this when I was traveling on the road when I was working um, at my other job, but um, like an emergency pack is like really cool to make and take mm-hmm. with you. Just putting some um, nuts in there, beef jerky, and then like um, a little mini olive oil bottle in case you want to go buy a salad from somewhere. And yeah. I mean, that stuff's no- never going to really go bad, but yeah. you've got your proteins and fats at least. Uh huh. Fruit, you can't really keep fruit in there, but. Um, you could at least keep some protein and fats, which will that's, satisfy that's you. That's solid. Yeah. yeah. Nice. What's your favorite color? Purple. Purple. I know that one. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, this okay. one's important. Last one, the this best one, question. This is uh, very personal. Uh, uh. <laughs> you, you have one superpower. What would it be? My superpower would be. They can't include any of the ones that you already have. <laughs> it's be. Uh, to fly. Fly. To fly. Perfect. All right. Yeah. That's awesome. I would like to fly, get around places faster. 
<laughs> well, I we, can do have, more. <laughs> uh, we have totally hit it out of the park by convincing you to come and spend time with Thanks, us. Yes, thank you very much. So I really much can't thank you. Enough. <laughs> this, this is great. You're great. You're welcome. And I appreciate it. Uh, one thing, who is your coach again? Max L. Hodge and, with and Training Think Tank. Training Think Tank. Yes. Dot com. Right. Yes. Okay. TrainingThinkTank.com. Um, they have an awesome blog, too. Your gym. Okay. What's your, your CrossFit gym? Hit and Run. CrossFit Hit and Run. CF Hit and Run. Com. And what about you? Can we follow you somewhere? Um, you can follow me on Instagram. Uh, I believe it's Brandy McGoldrick <laughs> is my. <laughs> we'll figure it out. It's either Bra- I'm pretty sure it's just Brandy McGoldrick. Uh-huh. I had two names at once because. I started using Instagram, couldn't figure it out, so didn't use it, and then a year later tried to come back and created another one. And the only difference was that my name had a seven at the end of it because that was okay. my number in college. Mm-hmm. But I'm pretty sure it's just Brandy McGoldrick now. <laughs> okay. Cool. Cool. All right. Anything else you want to plug or um, send people to you? Not really. You can go check out Mike's new mobility kit site. Mobility kit. He launched right. his yeah, okay. 3.0 kit today, which is really nice. Yeah, it is nice. You can check that out. Mobilitykits.com. Yeah. Oh, that's the old that's one, though. That's the old one. Oh, <laughs> 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 right. uh, well, Mike's mobility kit. <laughs> we'll have some new ones in here soon. All yeah. Right. I think That'll he might work. be right. coming up here later today. I don't know. Yeah, I think he's got to bring some stuff up. Yeah, I think something. so. But anyways. Cool. <laughs> Fantastic. Right. Thanks, Thank you very guys. much. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.